Hi, this is Captain Chaudhary. I will continue my lecture on gyro. I welcome you to attend this session of gyro. What if you have to trace the path of north axle of a gyro that is damped and tilt? Uh, you start from uh, some azimuth with axle horizontal. Let's look at the drawing. The drawing would look like this. This is the starting point. Okay. The axle will go and have uh, an east-west peak on the major axis of the ellipse over here also and all the east-west peaks are occurring at the same level when you start from here let us see in the beginning which way the axle will move so the forces which are acting is drifting that is of permanent constant magnitude tilting upwards because you are on the east and tilting because you have some azimuth azimuth causes the tilting so if you make a kind of parallelogram the axle wants to move in this direction now when you reach this point at this point the drifting is equal to control precision and tilting is maximum but because this is gyro damped and tilt you will have some amount of damping towards the horizontal but of course damping is much less than the tilting which is upwards that causes the axle to reach this point at this point the tilting and damping forces are equal that means the damping precision which is an outcome of control precision now control precision here is the maximum because the tilt is maximum and drifting of the constant magnitude in eastward direction. This is the point at which the tilting becomes equal to damping precision. Damping precision downwards, damping precision depends on the control precision. Subsequently, you reach this point. This is the point where you get uh, the east-west forces becoming equal, drifting eastwards, control precision westwards. Then you have tilting downwards and you also have damping precision downwards. Tilting and damping precisions are downwards. At this point, when the axle becomes horizontal, you will have no control precision and therefore you will have no damping precision. The only forces which are over here is tilting by the virtue of azimuth which you have downwards, downwards because you are on the west and then drifting. This guides you that the axle would move in this direction. Probably you will reach an equilibrium at this point. At this point, because you are uh, below the horizontal, you are in the northern hemisphere, but you are below the horizontal. Uh, what will happen is the drifting will be supported by control precision, both acting in the same direction. Control precision has reversed its direction because you are not you are not above the horizontal. The axle is not in the normal position that is above the horizontal. It is dipped below the horizontal. Now, tilting, which way will be the tilting? Tilting will be downwards. But it is balanced by damping precision which is upwards and because these two forces are balanced, you have the southern peak reaching here. Eventually, the axle will come this way and once again, there is a point where east-west forces become equal. Tilting is upwards, damping is downwards. But upward tilting is more than downwards uh, damping. Once again, you have a peak over here, northern peak over here, where the tilting force is equal to damping precision. And eventually, the axle settles at this point slightly above the horizontal, slightly to the east of meridian. So this is how you would draw a north axle of a gyro that is damped and tilted in northern hemisphere, starting from a initial posture that is horizontal and in a northeasterly azimuth. You might be asked to draw the path of a south axle in northern hemisphere, say the gyro damped in tilt. You have to follow a simple principle that if the north axle is pointing north, the south axle has to point south at that moment. Simple rule has to be followed. If the north axle is above the horizontal, south axle has to be below the horizontal. Uh, which way the south axle will go when the north axle is pointing the north, right? So let's look at the diagram. This is the normal horizontal. If you were to draw an ellipse uh, 
for the north axle and if you had to draw the ellipse for the south axle these would be the major axes respectively now we had seen that a gyro that is damped in tilt the north axle pointing north and horizontal it moved like this it reached this point and then there was a peak over here and then subsequently east west peak was over here here's the peak here's the east west peak once again you have east west peak but the downward movement and the axle would move like this another peak over here probably and then it would move another peak over here that is east west peak and another north south peak over here and eventually the gyro settles somewhere here if you have to find out which way the south axle will uh, go when the north axle is pointing north what happens to the south axle it is pointing south right so if you could draw the mirror inverted image mirror inverted means mirror image means left to right left becomes right and right becomes left and inverted means top becomes bottom and bottom becomes up if we could draw the mirror inverted image i will draw in a packed line you know it would probably the opposite side that is the, the south is opposite of north the south axle would reach this point and then <clears throat> the way you have peak over here the south axle will probably have peak over here then again uh, this point is represented by this point in mirror inversion and then finally we know that the settling is going to take place over here probably the next peak would occur over here and then the next peak over here and then the next peak over here and final settlement over here so you have seen that what i have basically done is looking at the path that is traced by the north axle of the gyro i have uh, plotted the opposite side so this is the path traced by south axle in northern hemisphere not southern hemisphere in northern hemisphere in case you are asked what will be the path traced by north axle in southern hemisphere when we talk about the north axle in southern hemisphere we know that it settles slightly to the west and slightly below the horizontal so actually you can start off like this that this way would be the drifting and by the virtue of azimuth you will also have tilting over here tilting is downwards because you are on the west drifting is this way so this is how your path will be followed at this point the drifting becomes equal to control precision you can show control precision over here and the damping precision upwards so damping precision and uh, the tilting then you reach uh, this point at which the damping precision becomes equal to tilting and this is a point where control precision is maximum so basically what you have to understand is the drifting is on the west side right this is the path that is traced by north axle in southern hemisphere you're talking about north axle in southern hemisphere when it is southern hemisphere the drifting has to be westward control precision opposite to the drifting so long as the axle is below the horizontal damping precision is towards the horizontal so this is what is maintained and finally the settling occurs at this point this particular drawing which i have drawn in pack line can represent two things number one path traced by south axle in northern hemisphere or a path traced by north axle in southern hemisphere you may be asked to draw the path traced by the gyro axle of a gyro that is damped in azimuth in southern hemisphere we start from zero altitude that is zero tilt and a zero azimuth so the axle is horizontal and pointing north let us see what happens in southern hemisphere here's the meridian this is the horizontal axis that is azimuth or drift axis this is the tilt axis we start from here because it is southern hemisphere the drifting will be uh, westwards this is the only force to start with now let us say this is the line 
or this is the level which indicates that at this level control precision is equal to drifting. Now what happens is, as we know that the gyro that is damped in azimuth, we have a damping precision which is encouraging the uh, axle to move towards the meridian. So the moment the axle say reaches this point, now the control precision will depend on how much you are away from the horizontal. Now control precision is not so much, but it is added with damping precision so that it becomes equal to drifting at this level. So this peak of east-west equilibrium occurs before reaching the major axis. Now next we straight away show the meridian. In meridian what happens? In meridian there is no damping precision. We have a control precision which is maximum. There is no tilting. Here the tilting force must be shown which brings the axle down, right? And then we will have another peak which will occur over here. Why here? Because here the control precision is bigger than drifting, but damping precision is what supports the drifting. That's why the equilibrium occurs uh, beyond the major axis of the ellipse. Again, let me move to the meridian. Now in the meridian what happens is you have no azimuth so tilting will not be there. You are going to have the drifting which is less than control precision. Then you will have another peak over here and then you will finally settle here. At this peak what you want to show is the drifting is equal to the combination of control precision and damping precision. Finally you settle at this point of course here you have drifting and here you have control precision which is actually bigger than drifting then for the equilibrium the damping precision supporting the drifting of course there is no damping precision on the meridian but well, symbolically what we want to show is the damping precision is out of phase with control precision so you have seen the gyro that is damped in azimuth in southern hemisphere will settle at a position which is uh, slightly beyond the major axis of the ellipse and uh, drifting and damping precision are shown to be equal to control precision at the equilibrium position in the meridian.